I just have a question about your accent. How easy is it for you to like not speak with it in Daredevil when you're you know acting as mad? And can you answer my question without your accent? <laughs> Way too self-conscious to do that, man. <laughs> so, so, no way. No way. Um, you, you know, the, the truth is, um, the truth is with accents, um, there are people, in, in my experience, there are people who can do accents like that. They, they, they can tell jokes and tell stories, and they can listen to a guy from South Africa, and they can mimic him immediately. And then there's someone like me who attempts at any accent, and it sounds like I'm doing someone from, from Pakistan. <laughs> and and I, I really, really have to work so hard at accents. Can we have one sentence? Just one sentence? <laughs> Daredevil, you got like these ninja skills. Are you good about like sneaking around and not making noise? Like when you're at home and you're trying to move around with, you know, quietly. Are you good at that, or do you make a lot of noise? No, I, I, I feel like I'm good about it, but I, I've recently discovered that I might not be because I've been we're doing a lot of night shoots, and um, so I'm coming home at like four or five a.m. and I'm coming to the house and I'm waking the baby up every single time, and then you know what I mean, and it's like. I feel like I'm being really quiet. Maybe I shouldn't have cereal. <laughs> but like when you come home and it's 5 a.m. and you're so tired, and it's, and it's cereal, you know? Like really cheap cereal. The cereal that you shouldn't be eating, especially if you play a superhero. <laughs> like really sugary. Yeah, just like the, the, the stuff that you'd be ashamed of anyone else to see, you know what I mean? Like, like every bite. The cereal that's supposedly yeah. for the baby, you know? <laughs> every bite is like pronounced and like yeah. every crunch is like resonating yeah, through your whole house. Yeah. It's become like a thing. I can't help it. You know, I come in and I'm like, I gotta have my cereal now. <laughs> I can undo all the hard work I do with my fruit loops. <laughs> Another thing that's quite funny is because when you when you have to do an actual fight scene, when you whenever you, whenever you've like pretended to hit someone as you're growing up or whatever, you you can't help but make the the noises. It just something just comes out of you. So they had to keep saying to me, "Don't stop doing that with your mouth," because I'd be like, "Pow, yeah, bang!" Yeah. Uh, you know? And then it's like it's, you can't do that. So I have a cool story. So I um when I was. When I went to uh, the American Foundation for the Blind, um, uh, I went to one of their benefits, and they asked me if there was anything that I could donate for the silent, for the auction. So they, uh, they, I went to my boss and I said, "Can I? Is there anything you can give me to give to donate to the charity for a, for the auction?" And my boss called me up and said, "Yeah, we can give you the red glasses from season one." So I was like, that's so cool. So I told the American Foundation of the Blind and I, they put it on the registry and then the night of the gala, we all showed up and there were loads of things. It was like holidays and, you know, people donated this, that, whatever, loads of things. And my glasses, the glasses weren't there, it was just a picture of them and I was, I had them framed and signed the thing. And um, the auction closed the, at 9.30 and dinner was at 9.00. So at 9.15, I went to the toilet and I went and I thought, oh, I'll just, I'm just going to see what the price is, like how much it raised. And it was like 250 bucks for the glasses. And I'm like, what? So I'm like, fine, I'm buying them. <laughs> so, so I paid 500, I put down $500 for them and I won them. <laughs> and then at the end of the auction, you have to, the people who won the thing that has to go and pay for them. <laughs> so I had to line up with everyone, and, they were, and I was like, I was like really embarrassed, but I really wanted the glasses, you know. What I mean? <laughs> so uh, I lined up, and then the woman was like, "Don't you? Didn't you donate these?" And I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah." So now I'm just about paying for them. And then they were like, and then I got a call from someone like the next day. They're saying, "Oh, hi, we're from the American Foundation Blind. Um, we just want to coordinate getting the glasses to the person who won the glasses." <laughs> I'm 
my, it's already taken care of. <laughs> so, so yeah, the answer to your question is, um, is I have a, uh, I have the glasses. <laughs> that, so do you ever put them on, just go to like a coffee shop and just see what happens or not? No, but I, because but I, I, I'm too frightened I'd like lose them or something. It's so cool, my glasses. The thing that I try and do all the time is I, I read the comics. Um, uh, yeah, which I used to do. So when I first got to the, the job, I had to take the train into the city to the gym before work every day. So I'd read the comics it, on the train. But now I can't do that because now I'm Daredevil reading a Daredevil comic on a train. And that's like really embarrassing, you know? I did do something quite fun um, uh, at the New York Comic Con. Um, I had a free couple of hours. I was meant to go, I was, had a panel, I was meant to go back home, but there was a really bad rainstorm, so I was just stuck in the convention. So I, I had a friend go and buy me a Spider-Man mask, and I put it on, and I went out into the convention just to walk around and see it for the first time. I'd never been out. And then I started seeing people dressed up as DD. So, um, so what we did, it was like, what we did is me and my buddy Sean, who was with me, we would go up to guys who were dressed as DD and we were like, hey, can we take a photo with you? And they would be like, sure. And then we'd be like, oh no, my phone is dead. Can we take it with your phone? So the guys would be like, okay, and hand us his phone. And then I would take the mask off and take a photo with a guy in DD. And then I would put it back on and give him his phone back and walk away. <laughs> and, and it was, and so we didn't, for the most part, we didn't get to see people's reaction because we gave them the phone and then went. And, and initially they were like, why did that person want a photo with me and then with my phone and then walk away? And then they'd look at the picture and they'd realize. So, um, but what we did do is we, uh, one of the, I, I don't really know how social media works, but one of the guys in Marvel social media, he went online and he did a lot of like, searching because people tag stuff right so he found i think we did like seven or eight pe people and we found five of them on social media and it was really cool and they'd posted it and been like oh my god i was walking through the convention and then someone asked me for a photo and it turned out to be charlie and like it's pretty cool uh what i'm gonna do it this year as well so if you guys want to dress up as dd and walk around the new york convention you may get lucky one of the producers was on set and uh and he said oh i just saw the scene that with you and John in the graveyard when he talks about his family and there's a really beautiful moment where the camera's on Daredevil and there's a tear coming down his face through the mask, right? And I remember thinking, huh, I remember crying in that scene. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I was like, I'm a male actor so that crying doesn't come that easily to me. So I remember if I cried in the scene, I, I needed to be like a super close-up, everyone needs to know, you know what I mean? And I, I would remember if I was crying in that scene, and I was like, that's so weird. And then I remember, right at the beginning of the scene, I had to carry this motherfucker. From the, from the Dude, I thought you were crying! Yeah, man, it's like, I see it's tear. I see that tear, I was like, this fucking guy is Here's part of the mask on, man. You don't even need to do that shit. Here's what happened. I carried him up the hill four times, five times in a row, and then I and then I had to sit there and, and I was listening to his speech, and the sweat is pouring down my face. Right? And, this, and, and just from sheer luck, one one of these like, droplets of sweat comes down the center of the mask, and then, and then it appears from under the mask, and it looks like I'm crying, man. I swear to God. It, I swear to God, if I ever win an acting award, I wish they played that for it, you know? Because <laughs> it's sweat. Okay, so episode eight of season two, it, it begins with Elektra after the fight by the hole, and Elektra gets stabbed, and then we're in the car, the car chase, with the, with the hand following us. So they have fake glass, from, from, so that we're not sitting on real glass. Um, it's not going to work. And, uh, and no, no, but it was kind of it was kind of funny because we were like we were kept on like trying when we were waiting around sitting in this car we kept on like trying to get it and the other ones down the costume. It was really funny. Yeah. Yeah. We do take our job seriously as well. <laughs> so I learned the I very early on in season one I learned the expression Easter egg. Do you guys know what, what that is? Yeah. Right. I didn't I, I didn't really understand that concept. I thought they were talking about 
there would be like, oh, there's Easter eggs in the scene. <laughs> I was like looking for actual Easter eggs. <laughs> the, the black costume is, is the most comfortable one and is, <laughs> and is, is the easiest one to, to go to the toilet in by like a long way. Like the, the, the red one, I love, obviously, because it's like the iconic red Daredevil suit and, and, and you, can't, you can't replace that. But there were times where I'm like, uh, how badly do I need to pee? Because I'm, I'm just, this too much work. Um, so, the, there were, there were, put it this way, there were, there were days on season three when I was working with Wilson, who was wearing the red suit, and I was just like, ha ha. <laughs> yeah. But I will share, you, I share a quick story with you guys, um, but I'm not going to do it, so don't ask me to. <laughs> the, um, on season one, as you know, the whole season was in the black costume. And during that season, there was a GIF going around, people were sending, which is Daredevil in, the red, in a red suit, like a cartoon Daredevil, doing this kind of sexy dance. <laughs> And so everyone had seen it and was like laughing about it. And then, you know, the final episode, I have the red suit on. And by now, it's episode, you know, we're very close with all the crew and we've all been joking and laughing. And we were on set in the alleyway doing the fight scene with Fisk. And um, one of the guys was like, oh, you remember that gif that we were looking at at the beginning of the season? So I did it. <laughs> I did my version of the Daredevil in the sex scene, doing the sexy dance, and uh, and evidently someone got it on camera. Uh, so um, that's pretty funny for them. Uh, I worked with a with a guy, a guy called Joe Stretche. He's become a good, a good friend of mine. He's been legally blind for 20 years. A, a woman in the street once hit me. Uh, because I was filming him. I was filming him with his permission because I was trying to learn his cane technique. Mm -hmm. But she didn't know that. She thought this woman in New York thought I was filming a blind man. And she came up to me and she went, Oi, that's rude! <laughs> and hit me. I grew up Catholic, so a lot of that stuff kind of came for free. Um, <laughs> you know, like, all, all, the, all that sitting in my apartment feeling shitty about myself, I got that for free. <laughs> As I said before, you know, the accent was really hard. I had to work really hard on the blindness, you know. Uh, the, the, actually, you know, forget about that. The, 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 the hardest thing I have to do, right, is when Matt is, when Matt is either by himself or he's with someone who knows that he's dead, he, he can operate like someone who is not visually impaired, but he would never need to look at something in order to pick it up. Right? So there's tons of scenes where like, I'm in my apartment and I have to reach for a mug over here or grab something from behind me, but he would never turn his head to look for it because he doesn't need to because he has a 360 radar sense, right? So we, we spent a lot of time with me kind of going... <laughs> you know, I can't look at any of the stuff I'm doing, you know? It's really annoying. You know, and probably, if I have to pick something up, you know, that's over here and I can't see it, Matt Murdock would just pick it up, right? But we have to do a ton of takes, because Charlie's like... <laughs> In episode four, where Claire Temple um, chucks a, my, my shirt at me from behind, and I grab it midair without looking at it. And I wanted to do that, it's like a really cool character trait, I wanted to include it. Um, it was a nightmare. <laughs> but we had to have someone off stage who would do a countdown. So she'd get ready to throw it, and there'd be this guy going, three, two, one, now! And I'm, God, sorry. <laughs> we had to do it like 15 times. One of the things that, again, one of the things that I do as a human a lot is smile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and I remember thinking early on, I'm not sure DD smiles as much as I do. You know? <laughs> so that was something I had to work on, like literally stop smiling. <laughs> well, I, I'm able to do almost all of the fights now. For season two, I can do all of them. I just, there are certain moves I can't do, you know? Um, so, you know, whenever, whenever like, 
dead, it'll leave the ground for more than one turn. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely not me. I, I, I do this bit. <laughs> and then they cut, yeah? The funny thing is, we had a bunch of fight sequences, and other than that, there was like nothing, no complaints. But then we had one scene where we were kissing a lot, and which is in general normally quite safe. And, and, and oh, with and, Charlie and, Cox. And Elodie was after a while. She was like, "Your beard is really hurting my face." <laughs> and I was like, "But well, that's the problem that we have." <laughs>